can spell it out. No, seriously. I mean, how did you, when was the first time you ever knew that there was such a thing as jet ski racing? Well, there was this one time at band camp. Working, uh, yeah, one day at band camp. Uh, no, working Marine Patrol back in 2006, we had five fatalities on the Delta. And uh, it just made me realize that people, most people, not racers, but most rec riders don't know the dangers of the Delta or how skis handle in a panic situation. They lit off on the throttle and think they're going to turn, and that's when they run into bridge abutments or other boats. So I was at the Antioch Speedway watching the sprint cars race, which I love, having a beer, minding my own business. There's a 1,000 people in the stands, and uh, the lights were on. And I go, why can't we do something like this with jet ski racing, with uh, a, like a monthly or a weekly series where it's regular, not just three or four you know, races a year? And Evan at the time was putting on three or four, you know, the Western States and some other races. So I called a few people saying, hey, what's, uh, what are the chances of getting like a regular point series? And no one was really interested. And as I've been, uh, as I've learned in life, sometimes it's better just to do things yourself rather than uh, wait for someone else to do it. So uh, I was able to get insurance for the races. Uh, we put a lot of work and training into our, our program, safety-wise. We run some rules that other race organizations don't. But uh, I didn't think we'd be around nine years. I don't think too many people gave us, like, past three. And it, it's been great. It's probably the uh, best experience of my life. Well, I, I personally have to thank you and apologize because I was one of those people that kind of stonewalled on you. I, I was not real confident. And I apologize. I am that witch, Lisa Lisa. But no, you are, I got to say, you have built one heck of a program. And, and one of the things for me, I, I literally have been involved from a racer standpoint to a promoter. I've worked every position at a race. And I spent about eight years course marshalling and got all my training and certification from Sean Eladio at K38 Rescue. John Bonkowski's been through her program, a number of folks. Your water safety crew, A, I gotta commend you for being so safe and having so many course marshals on the water and ready. The redundancy is very important. And folks, I'm telling you, if you've never been hurt during a race, you will never be so glad to see that hand reach down and yank you out of the water. And you've got a great team here. I understand you have a new trainee. Well, some people think we run unique rules and there's only one that I know of that we do. All the rules we run, the one ski lay safe zone rule, everyone said, well, you can't pass in the corners. You can pass, you just can't rail uh, the dude in the, next to you and put him in the hospital. But the only thing unique that we do is in a yellow flag corner, all our racers are mandated to slow to half speed and put a hand up. No different than NASCAR, a dirt track, when there's a car that flips or anything else. And that really makes things safer for the course marshal trying to do the pickup and, and the guy in the water. Um, plus, when you're going half speed, you can take a look at the guy, make sure he's not face down if Team Orange isn't there. But I, I got to say, I, I mean, I've done a lot of cool things in 28 years, helicopters, K-9, Marine Patrol. And uh, by far, this safety staff is, I am so proud to be associated with these guys. They're incredible. And uh, this by far, like I said, it's been the best experience of my life. And these guys can get a couple more years out of me. Well, I gotta say, I'm I'm like that nightmare. I'm like the waitress that goes to a restaurant to have dinner and then critiques the heck out of my wait staff. And I watch. It's it's just kind of natural. You don't mean to. I certainly would never critique them. I, they're tip top. I'm really impressed with how fantastic a job they're doing. Enjoyment of being uh, at these races, not only watching the racers. I mean, we got some incredible talent. But I get personal enjoyment watching Team Orange, the teamwork, the one that's doing the pickup with the, the second guy following. You see the other three guys automatically shift over. The teamwork is just amazing. So if you're watching on the live stream at home, uh, you know, take a break from the racing and check out these guys working because they're amazing. Yeah. You know, Jim Lambert, Kurt Nolenberg here. Uh, I remember a race in Pittsburgh, California was it Antioch, California? It was Antioch, California. The Rivertown Jamboree. Rivertown Jamboree. I was and racing a Ducks you were boat. A, you were a pilot, I believe, a racer there, weren't you? Ducks boat. The, the inflatable Ducks sport boat. boats. That's right. And if, if, if memory serves me right, you were dominant that day. Is that not correct? We did, we did all right. But yeah. I, I didn't know who Kurt Nolenberg was, but I thought, man, that announcer's pretty cool. He's making me feel important. So uh, it was a fun day. But and, I think and I had Jim the most Lambert, fun. 
He was, was the, the fastest one. guy I'd ever seen in a Ducks boat, by I, far. I was the only guy to get the trophy girl to sit on his lap, so I thought that was personally uh, a good achievement. And boy, was her mom pissed. Yeah, I was going to say, there's laws against that, Jim. <laughs> Lap dance at a public uh, event? Yeah, but not by a 12-year-old. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Lambert Yeah, statute out. of limitations is gone. <laughs> We're just kidding, of course, folks. Jim Lambert, great sense of humor. And really, truly, Lisa, he, a, a visionary. He, he really, you know, to, to his credit, a lot the of the people that, that came to assist with him in his second year, I was one of them. Uh, Robbie Hall being another one. Robbie, you know, as I uh, we said earlier, brought, you know, gave me a phone call from the uh, Sacramento Boat Show saying, hey, there's this guy who's going to put on jet ski races and he needs an announcer. I'm like, well, yeah, why aren't we there already? And then he tells me about this one ski length safe zone rule and i'm like and we all snickered you right? can't do we all, that let's admit it we all come snickered. on rubbing is rubbing is racing, racing you know no. well you know what the reality is rubbing was destroying our sport and racing doesn't need rubbing yeah i don't think a lot of people realize that in sanctioned racing we had a sanctioning body then um their insurance all fell under one umbrella and if there was a promoter back i, I i'm not literally not referring to anybody but let's just say there was a promoter back east and he was not really all that keen on safety and he had a lot of serious accidents at his events and there were lawsuits etc that impacted everybody nationwide and it yep. impacted promoters ability to get insurance at a reasonable rate it became outrageously expensive and at one point we were literally threatened with not being able to secure any insurance um probably five six years ago we were at that point yeah. It was bad. Yep. It was crazy. And yet Jim Lambert comes in and uh, has this uh, incredible safety record. And frankly, if there were if that other JSBA organization <laughs> were to adopt his rule, uh, and I say, you know, he's getting ready to retire from uh, from the police department. I, think he needs I, I am job. thinking I think he needs another job. I'm thinking he needs to head up that other organization. <laughs> I think they need to join up with the DJSA. Well, I'll tell you what. I think we're looking forward to some great racing today. We're going to have uh, pretty full lines. I think at the end of the day, maybe we should get together a staff race. I'm going to throw this out there, Lisa Price. I would, I would bet a body part... <laughs> That there are more X2s the on the line that. here than there would be in the national today. There's what? More X2s on the line oh, yeah. than at the national yeah, for races. Sure. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And the so what does that tell you? Is, well, it's really built here. And I got to say, I got a buddy named Scotty Mack back east who came up with this brilliant idea to get sport class back on the line at world finals. And in order to do that, they needed to build sport classes nationwide at a various tour stops and, and regional racing levels. That started at about the same time Jim Lambert started his program here. And between the two of them, last year at World Finals, I believe we had qualifying for the vintage boats. Um, there was the most massive line for Pradonovich's vintage ski class yep. race. It was amazing. And, um, you know, kind of, a, 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 you don't see a lot of sports go throwback, but we can do it and get away with it, and it's still very exciting and enjoyable to, to watch. It's super affordable to get into. You can pick up, because they don't make these X2s anymore, you can pick up a you can pick up an X2 for a couple hundred bucks if you look in the right place. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, they're, yeah, they're starting to get strict. Um, down south, though, seriously, if you guys are looking for a boat, look on Craigslist, because I see these boats for free, and they're running People just have them in their backyards, and they're like, come and pick them up. I am completely serious. You find one down there, I'll go look at it and throw up my truck and bring it to you. It's amazing how many boats are given away. Would absolutely love to do that. As a matter of fact, we've got an X or we've got a an HX. How crazy is this? We remember the X2s, of course. And then the blasters came on right. the scene, and we knew that people were going to get killed because of the difference in the two hull styles. Yeah. Then the HX came out, the missiles. Right. By the way, HXs, I believe, still hold 
well, at least during the national tour, held the, uh, the, the lap records for every single course out there, even beyond the, uh, the uh, 